Hello and welcome. It is day four of Excel World Cup Boot Camp and of Text Week, and today we are going to talk about wildcards. So, what is a wildcard? Excel has two wildcards, which you know, wildcard, just like you think about you're playing card, Joker is wild, means a Joker can stand in for any other card. Uh, wildcards in text strings, a question mark can stand in for any other one character, and a star can stand in for any string of characters. So let's look at a few simple examples. If you have the pattern A question mark question mark D, it just means anything that is A, then two other characters, then D matches the pattern. So A, B, C, D matches the pattern, uh, A, 6, 7, D matches the pattern, and I included kind of lowercase here to emphasize talked about case sensitivity yesterday, Th these matches are not case sensitive, A, A, A D matches, this one doesn't match because it has too many characters. This only matches two characters. Uh, this has too few. It only matches one. Uh, and the D and the A are the wrong way around here. Uh, a star D matches all these things that have more or less or nothing in between the A and the D, uh, but doesn't match this one because it doesn't start with the A. There's something else before it. Uh, if you change the pattern to put like another star before it, then it would just be contains an A followed by a D. But in this case, it starts with A, ends with D. Uh, a doesn't match it because there's no D. ADDA, again, doesn't end with D. Uh, star day matches Monday, matches Friday, does not match Saturdays or day three, things like that. Uh, and this pattern here would match uh, a social security number as text. Um, then in addition to that, you can also include greater than, less than, and not equal. Uh, so for example, less than or equal to M uh, would match M, would match India, would match 987 because generally uh, all text is less than all letters. Uh, I didn't include my non-matches here, but this would be whatever, P. Uh, greater than C would match D, would match Charlie, because again, think about the way you read a dictionary, uh, you know, C followed by anything else comes after C. Uh, wouldn't match Bravo, wouldn't match upper or lower case C, uh, wouldn't match this greater than C either, um, which is something you have to be a little bit careful of because you think if you're kind of counting this pattern, then this thing that exactly matches that should match it. We'll talk about escaping in a second. Uh, and then these two together, uh, less than, greater than, means not equal to. So this would match everything except uppercase A or lowercase A. So I mentioned this thing here about, you know, if you want to literally match. So what if you're, what if the pattern that you want to match is actually, you know, A star? Like not A followed by anything, but actually A followed by a star. So then you have a thing called escape characters. So you can escape a wild card with this thing called a tilde. So in other words, A tilde star D matches A star D, but does not match A, B, C, D. So it stops being a wild card when you put a tilde in front of it. If you do something like this, the tilde only <clears throat> impacts the character directly in front of it. So this is X, a literal question mark, any other character, and then Z. So it matches x question mark y z, x question mark question mark z, x question mark 9z, and so on. Does not match x y z or x y y z. I'd never thought about this before in my life, but when I was talking about escape characters, uh, you know, looking at wildcards here and greater than, less than here, I was like, okay, so does the escape character escape a greater than or less than? As far as I can see, it doesn't. So for example, the pattern tilde less than c does not match the text less than c. I don't know of any way that you can count the number of occurrences of the literal text less than C uh, in a range. If you do, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but honestly, I've, I use wildcards quite a bit, and I've never thought about that before today, so maybe it's not that important. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving. What else we got? Uh, oh yeah, so where can you use wildcards? First thing is you cannot use them with equals. So if you type in something like ABC equals A question mark C, that will return false. Uh, so that's, it does not work that way. But what can you use them with? You can use them with count ifs and all the other ifs. Uh, so in other words, you can say, uh, let's just grab one of these here. So you can say count ifs, uh, I don't know, this is B star, and it will say, yes, there is one B star there. Uh, if you extend, extend it to the whole range, it'll say there's one B star, because only one of these starts with B. Uh, but you know, maybe you want to say how many of these contain a C. Then you could say star C star, and it says two of them contain a C. This one doesn't, but this one and this one both do, uh, and so on. So that's count ifs. Uh, you can use it with VLOOKUP and with MATCH. Uh, so in other words, if you look up A star D, that will match anything that, that fits that pattern, and same with MATCH. Um, you can also use it with XLOOKUP and XMATCH, but not by default. So in other words, if I say, uh, XLOOKUP, uh, let me come sort of somewhere I have more space, not behind my face. If I say XLOOKUP, 
A star D uh, in some table, that will only match the literal A star D unless you go to the match mode. Uh, let's scroll up here, get it not behind my face. Uh, match mode, select two wildcard character match. Otherwise, it, it is always a literal match. Uh, so that's just one to watch out for. VLOOKUP and MATCH will, will match wildcards by default, and you will have to escape them with the tilde if you don't want it to. XLOOKUP and XMATCH by default won't. SEARCH, uh, we talked briefly about this the other day, that uh, FIND doesn't deal with wildcards, but SEARCH does. Um, and then the last thing is the AUTO FILTER. Uh, so if you just kind of apply a filter to a range, uh, let's see, if we want to say text filter, contains, uh, well, of course, when you say contains, it works anyway, but I don't know, let's say you're interested in contains lookup, but maybe you're worried about misspelling, so you want anything that is L followed by K up. Uh, let's see, then you get that. Anyway, um, this is, I probably shouldn't be doing this in the live version that other people have access to, but never mind. Uh, okay, so then the last thing on this topic is uh, just to say, get creative with patterns. Um, so th this is a real life example that I used a ton of the time. Um, I used to work on business reporting for a business that was gathered in five regions. So Americas, EMEA, Asia, ANZ, Japan, but also thought of APAC, meaning Asia plus ANZ plus Japan as one region. Um, and so I used this pattern all the time, which was uh, something that contains ME, matches both the Americas and EMEA. And so something that does not contain ME matches Asia, ANZ, Japan, but excludes EMEA and the Americas. I wouldn't recommend doing a funky, like, you know, weird pattern like this if there's any risk of the data changing or, or you know, new regions coming in or something like that. But, you know, in a case like this where there, there were always going to be five regions in the data, but we were always interested in grouping three of them, if you can spend a little time exploring and find a, a clever match like that, it's a good thing to do. Uh, let me show you a couple of applications in cases. So here's one of, uh, one of the cases that is available for free at the moment. Have I mentioned they're free? Go get them right now. They're only here for two weeks and then they stop being free after the, uh, after the first round. Go get them. Code is bootcamp. Details are in the video description. Uh, so this is Patrick's case uh, called What's My Flight Number? Um, and I, I won't do the, the whole thing now because there's a bunch of other lookup stuff. I'll, I'll be looking at more of the cases in a little more depth next week when we've got of both lookup and text in our tool belt. But for now, one of the things in this case was you had to treat flights that were either arriving in or departing from Canada differently. Uh, and you knew you just had this universe of 12 airports to deal with. But there were also two different versions of the airport code depending on in one of the levels they got mixed up. So question is, I mean, you look at this and you immediately see, okay, uh, Toronto and Montreal both start with a uh, Y in the code. So you might quickly say, okay, is, are there any other Ys? Uh, you can go find them all. A uh, little tip for you there, if you uh, if you hit Alt-I for find all and then Control-A, it will select them all. Uh, so the, these are all the matches. So you can see Sydney also matches a Y, but does not have a Y at the start. It's a little more complicated if you want a pattern that also includes this code. So in other words, a, a pattern that matches uh, that matches Canadian IATA codes that are all three letters but doesn't match anything else would be Y question mark question mark. But what if you want a pattern that matches these two as well but excludes both of these? So Y question mark question mark would match the YSS there so you'd have to be a little careful. Um, but again if you get creative about it all of these have Y as the third last character and neither of these do. Here it's the second last last and fourth last. So <clears throat> if you do something like this, uh, let's say count ifs, uh, this and let's just do some other character that won't appear in there, let's say dollar, uh, and the pattern that we want to match is, uh, sorry, not, not count ifs because count ifs doesn't want me to do a calculated thing. So let's say we're, we're looking for a pattern of y question mark question mark dollar in this and dollar. And that will tell you, yes, it is in there for the Canadian airports, and no, it is not in there for all the other airports. But also later on, you're interested in dealing with airport combinations, where it might be something, they're all like 
one airport code, then a dash, and then another airport code. Whoops, sorry. Uh, something like this. And so if you change this slightly to replace the dollar with a dash, then this will not only match here, but it will also match on any airport code that combines the two. Uh, so if you just, for example, wrap this in an is number, uh, not is na, is number, that will tell you this contains a Canadian airport. And so let's just put a couple of patterns together. So here's Madrid and Lisbon. Uh, and you could have even Canada to Canada, that's fine. Then you can apply the same pattern uh, to here. And it will return true if and only if one of these airports is Canadian by one of these codes and it will reject anything else. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going looking for something quite as weird as this in, uh, in a competitive setting. But if you use data like this in the real world where you know that you have a fixed universe, that can be worth exploring a little bit. The other thing that it can be quite helpful for is just data validation. So here's a case that I actually tripped up quite a bit on. Uh, this is Fantasy Excel by Peter Charles, also available for free. Have I mentioned they're free? Um, and the idea was you had uh, Fantasy Excel scores in this format, X, Y, 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 Z, where this was like, I think, number of levels completed, number of points scored, and number of bonus questions in a, in a sort of FMWC style setting. Um, and so the, the instructions specifically mentioned this uh, this X, Y, 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 Z, or Z, uh, why is my scroll not working? I don't know, uh, format. Uh, but then also in the examples mentioned a thousand as a possible score so that there were four characters. So I basically messed this entire case up because I thought that there were always three characters in the middle. And so I built something based on mid and a fixed number of characters and it didn't work. But if I had just spent 10 seconds to say, okay, count ifs, this is where all the data is stored with the values. So I expect them all to be in the pattern something, dash, something, 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 dash, something. Uh, so let's see how many do not match that pattern. Then in just a second, you can see, okay, hang on, this isn't right because that is not zero and it should be. Uh, so then you might spend a few seconds looking around and say, okay, is everything that's not that something 1000 zero, something 1000 something, and it is. So quick little bit of data validation there. I have failed on my 10 minute target again today, but I have to take another minute to show you something because it's hilarious. So <laughs> I was trying to think to myself, what are cases where I have used wildcards? So I used LinkedIn's famously bad search to try to find uh, like posts where I had talked about using wildcards. Um, it was as expected, famously bad. And so I went over to Bing and just typed in Dear Mother Early wildcard and got this hilarious uh, response from uh, the Bing artificial intelligence chatbot, whatever. Hi, this is Bing. I'm glad you're interested in Dear Mother Early, the Excel master of all times. Uh, that was that was very gratifying to see the internet tell me that. Don't let anybody tell you that, uh, that AI doesn't know what it's talking about. Anyway, uh, that's just for fun. That's what I got for today. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to get the time to record videos for the weekend because I won't be recording at the weekend. I might get to do some today. So I may or may not be back tomorrow or Sunday uh, or Monday because it's a holiday here, but I'll be back before too long. See you next time.